Welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 Podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about what super kingpins have to do with Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs. My name is Tyler, and joining me on another episode of Snail Trail 4x4, episode 240. What? One <laughs> is Mr. Jimmy Jet. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little tired. It's been a it was a rough night um this last night for uh the family. So Oh yeah. Did y'all okay. drink a lot? No, no. Yeah. Uh the assistant didn't sleep well, so she was tossing and turning. It kept me up. And then the mini assistant got braces. Oh. And <laughs> so she came in complaining about how her she like can't fall asleep because her teeth are hurting. Yeah. She's in somewhat, you know, a minor continuous pain and mm-hmm. it just is keeping her up. So we gave her some, you know, kid cocaine. Motrin, oh, motrin. gotcha. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, that works too. Yeah. <laughs> cocaine some wouldn't opioids. put her to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Get her some Not heroin. That I would know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, so I didn't sleep well because everybody else doesn't sleep well. Gotcha. Yeah, but, but I'm good. Otherwise. I slept probably the best out of everybody. So look at you yeah, go yeah. being the winner. I know. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> nice man. It's a, what is this? A mu- uh, it's a Thursday episode. This is Thursday, man. I don't know how to keep track of stuff. <laughs> no, I things right now are crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm back ordered on panels as mm-hmm. of right now, uh, but thankfully in a matter of hours, I should be getting more panels. So there that'll, that'll be nice. So I can get up and running there too, you know, but, I know that um, I'm probably supposed to be leaving at the, you know, at this moment mm-hmm. <laughs> or depending on when the podcast comes out, uh-huh. I'm, I was considering going up to Barrett Lake with uh, Verde. Yeah. But I'm not going to be able to. Um, you got to get panels out. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I've got to solve. I've got to work for the customers. Yep. That's kind of, I think that's exactly what I said. That too. is exactly <laughs> what you said. That's why I rephrased yeah. it. I was Reused like, oh, it. I want to go to Barrett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going, they're doing Barrett on Thursday and then going to, uh, and then out on Friday and in the Rubicon on Friday mm-hmm. and then hanging out out there. Spider Lake. On Spider Lake, which mm-hmm. are, you're going on that trip, right? Yep. Cool. Yep. I'm headed to the Bay Area to go watch a, a concert on, nice. over the weekend. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting because this trip last year um, was a very cold yeah, it's, trip. It snowed on us. It snowed on us on our way out, which yeah. was I thought was fantastic. I loved it. It was fun. Um, the assistant liked it, too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because she was like, I got to sit in a warm truck reading a book, <laughs> drinking some wine. <laughs> While you guys were all out there fixing somebody's rig. Yeah. Welding some uh, track bar brackets on a JK exactly in the snow. Um, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun and it looks like we're going to have a repeat this year. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did see the weather rain. And that's supposed to be raining on, rain Saturday. on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Down here at least. Yeah. Which means probably snow up there. <laughs> maybe depending on how cold it gets. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. The secretary was supposed to come along this weekend. And okay. now that she saw the weather forecast, she's like, I don't think I want to go. <laughs> I was like, eh, I guess that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The assistant didn't mind at all because we were using the electric blanket. Oh, uh, yeah. So. And I, that's my plan, too, is to bring the electric blanket. So, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see what she decides to do. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Yep. Um, I'm excited for the weekend, though, but uh, we're going to go in and uh, go in at nighttime on Friday. Oh, mm-hmm. at least I am. Got it. Um, the rest of the club is going in like a 7 a.m. Friday, yeah. which I think is when the the two Jasons are going. I can't imagine if they're leaving Barrett to get there at 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. That's an early wake up. Oh, I guess that's right because they'd be going in I Thursday. Mean, you'd so, have yeah. to wheel. Mm-hmm. So you'd be minus three hours and maybe two hours for load up and drive. So five hours earlier than 7 a.m. They would have to wake up (laughs) plus plus an hour. Maybe let's just say for packing up everything, Mm. maybe a half an hour because they don't really unpack anything. Yeah. So they'd have to leave at like 1 30 to 2 a.m. to get there at 7 a.m. Yeah. (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do then. They're probably going to get there at noon and wheel in. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) probably. So I'm going to my plan is to get to the spillway around 7 to 8 p.m. 
and then wheel in at 7, 8 p.m. on Friday. Yeah, it's dark then. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. There you go. I got lights. I like yes, night wheeling. Uh, not as, not yeah. as many as Brennan. <laughs> I don't have 54 lights on the rig. No. no. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jesus. Bobcat has eight, nine, ten. If you, well, 10, 11, 12, if you include front, front and rear headlights. Gotcha. I don't know how many I have. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, not including headlights and rear lights. Yeah. So I ten. have four rock light or eight rock lights. Nice. Yeah. I have, I've got nine rock lights. I have nine rock lights. Yeah. <laughs> and then otherwise I have mm-hmm. headlights and taillights. Yeah. <laughs> you need a laser beam. No. Yeah. Don't get a laser beam. <laughs> they're, they're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but I do recommend everybody should get a siren. Those are a lot of fun. That, yeah. Uh, Speaking of sirens. Yeah. It was fun to watch uh, Glue Tread's video and uh, <laughs> see Simon pressing the button uh, to Andy. play with it. Oh, Andy. that's right. Andy pressing the button to play the siren. That was pretty fun. And then to start giggling. And then start giggling. <laughs> Yes, I started laughing at that point. In that, the was, video, that was pretty funny. That was, dude, Simon did a killer job on that video. You guys both did a great job with your videos. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, both videos were awesome. I missed the premiere. I think I got there like as there was two minutes left in the video, the premiere, and I was Uh-oh. like, I'm not going to start here. So I rewound the whole thing. <laughs> I was curious how that works. So if mm-hmm. you join the premiere while it's going on, you jump in automatically where it, the video started. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you jump in automatically wherever the video is. Correct. During the premiere. Yeah. Yeah. But you can rewind and go back to the beginning. Then my video was like 17 minutes long. So if you came 10 minutes late, you started roughly 10 minutes into the video. Yeah. What was weird though is like I rewound all the way to the beginning and it went down to this like the countdown. The count the two minute oh, countdown time or something. I was like, well, this is annoying. Get past this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that. I thought the two minute countdown timer, I haven't ran a premiere in a really long time. Let's just uh-huh. say that. Uh, I didn't, I thought the two minute countdown timer would have started at four fifty eight. Yeah. So that the premiere started at five, uh. but it didn't. The premiere started at five and then it started the two minute countdown. Oh, right. And so it was like <laughs> okay. at five, the two minute countdown timer happened. I was like, Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed both videos. Yeah. I yeah, thought there were- was a little bit more, Kind of Ryan hit it dead on as he was talking with you earlier. There was more stuff about the trail in your video and there was more stuff just purely about the patch in glue treads video, which makes sure. a lot of sense, right? Cause yeah. that's <laughs> kind of what each, uh, each of the, what's what he was going for was mm-hmm. just getting his product highlighted yeah. and yours was like, yeah, we're doing the Rubicon trail. We're doing this crazy thing, but here's some really cool stuff about the trail too, while we're doing this. So it was nice. Yeah, kind of. I, it was fun. I mean, the whole event was fun. Like it was a fun being there and it was yeah. fun doing, you know, going and wheeling with those guys. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm really hoping that it, that portrays through the video that, you know, it was mm-hmm. that the video is fun to watch and you could tell that we were having a good time, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that you could tell that the glue tread patches really work, Yeah, you know, and if you don't have any and you go off-roading, then this is something you need to put in your arsenal. Yeah. I think one of my, my favorite highlights of the videos was Nick's intro. Yeah, that was so good. Lazy boy, <laughs> lazy boy, popping the chair out. Uh-huh. <laughs> lazy boy. That was great. <laughs> that was, that was really good. I was like, damn, uh, yeah, that kicked it. That was, that was killer. <laughs> Ryan's was okay. Mine was pretty funny. Yours was, you know, or mine was pretty standard and yours was kind of standard. My, yeah. was standard for me. I see you in yeah. your face in front of a microphone all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Go check it out. They're available over at the snail trail four by four YouTube channel and glue treads YouTube channel. Yes. So yeah, uh, there's two videos. I think that was confusing to a lot of people that, yeah, were there, that there were, we were making two videos. We made uh, technically we made three videos. True. <laughs> so I didn't well, realize that they were taking the are you including shorts. No, because <laughs> we yeah. made a shit ton of shorts. <laughs> we did a bunch of shorts and teasers. Uh, no, but apparently uh, they took the instructional video, how to put the patches on and made that a separate video. And I didn't yeah. realize they were doing that. Mm-hmm. So I haven't watched that one yet, but there's two videos over on the glue tread channel. One is the trail video. One is the how to put the patches on. And um, the snail trail one is the the snail trail uh, going through the trail yeah. with the patches. So yeah, I did. So on my video, at the very end of my video, I linked the glue tread video as like one of the thumbnails that pops up. 
Oh, nice. And then I linked in the description, the install, because yeah. in my video, I go, you know, there's a great install video of mm -hmm. how to install, you know, install glue tread patches, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And I was going to link to just another one of their videos that they have like in an office. Yeah. Like stabbing a tire, sort of similar to what the your guys' is TikTok, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realized that they put out a whole video of us doing the install, and I was like, "Oh, I changed the whole link and everything." Oh, so, nice. so it gets directed to that video. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I need to go and do something like that on the the Morphlay channel, just so that the videos are there, or make some blog articles about them on the website, so people can mm -hmm. find them. Yeah, we did a blog as well <laughs> on Snail Trail Four by Four. Oh, nice. Of Glue Tread that released mm -hmm. yesterday. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, and then my videos in that and then links and everything are up there. If you're think, if you want to know more information about the, the about mm -hmm. and the why and the like different applications, then the blog articles where to go. Cause we didn't gotcha. really cover any of that. Yeah. I didn't realize in, you were doing the, uh, the blog article. So that's at snail trail four by four.com. And then once right. you're there, the top menu, there should be options. There should be a blog yep. menu mm -hmm. button. So yeah. And yeah. I think right now, technically I think, well, as of when this video of this podcast comes out, it'll uh -huh. be the second article on the uh -huh. uh, when you go to the homepage. Okay. And it's glue tread again. I should probably change the picture, the thumbnail, mm -hmm. because it's the I just reused the same thumbnail that we used for the podcast. Oh. Uh <laughs> so I should probably figure out how to maybe I'll just put a red stamp blog across it yeah. or something. Yeah, I don't know. Cool stuff, man. Um, so that's a, a really fun update that is we talked about in the past about coming out. We'll have another fun update this Monday coming up because uh, we're going to talk about gift boxes on Monday. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll, like, where are you going with this? <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> um, so we'll talk about that on Monday. We have uh, another update since we're talking about glue treads. Yeah. Uh, this month's giveaway <laughs> yeah, <there we laughs> contains go. glue treads in them. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, I thought you're questioning me. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, does. No, it does. It does, Jimmy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So this month's, uh, you know, in, uh, giveaway for the Snail Trail Four by Four, I rate Four by Four giveaway. I don't. Do we have a Snail Squad? There's Snail a, Squad. There's our name for mm -hmm. it. The Snail Squad the giveaway is uh, two uh, t extreme tire repair kits from mm -hmm. Morflate, mm -hmm. which include the massive plug kit, the Kobe valves, and glue treads. Yep. So. And then we'll, so we have two of those to give away and two people will win one. Cool. Right. Two people will win one each. Each. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they have so to, have they two have to share one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two winners and each winner will win a kit. Nice. Um, yeah. We got two winners for this month. So you guys have until October 31st. Make sure you get signed up before going out trick or treating because Jimmy's going to shut it down before he goes trick or treating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just had a, a or really trick, trick or drinking trick or drinking. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> However, since the mini assistant just got braces, mm -hmm. there's like a ton of candy she can't eat. Oh, that's right. Bad timing. Any, yeah, sort well, of. Well, I guess good timing for you then. Yeah, either <laughs> way, because she has to have braces for 10 uh -huh. months. Yeah. So it's either lose uh, Halloween this year or lose Halloween next year. Could she get them put on it like November? Yeah, but there then we go. maybe that's what but I would But then do. she would have braces for her birthday. Oh, so I mean, we were trying to yeah. figure out. We actually <laughs> looked at a few of those things. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I might be some of the hard candy and some of the gummies. She's not going to be able to eat. I'll take the gummies, right? I'm going to bring them all in. <laughs> Perfect. They're we have a candy dish needs candy to get refilled. Dish. Yeah, exactly. Get rid of the Tide Pods in there. I know. <laughs> Especially since a kid runs around here occasionally. I know. I, hear. I felt so bad when she came in. I was like, uh oh, we need yeah. to take all the Tide Pods out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny joke. It is. It is. Oh man. Um. So yeah, we had that update. Let's see. Um. Yeah, so sign up before the end of the month. Correct. To get in for the giveaways. Mm -hmm. Also, the gift box tier is open. So mm -hmm. if you want to move into that tier or join that tier, that is open till the end of the month as well. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I put the mini assistant to bed after her sugar rush, mm -hmm. I'm going to be shutting those tiers down. Cool. Sounds good. Um, those are available over at irate four by four. 
uh, to create an account on I before before it's completely free. You don't have to pay anything, but if you want to get in for the snail squad, then you go down to the snail trail four by four forum, which is um, ahead of and above the wheeling wine and whiskey forum. Um, because it's, uh, in pop in order of popularity. Absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. and so you can go over and click on that snail trail four by four forum, and then all your payment options will come up. Um, if you're on a mobile device, they come up at the bottom of the page. And if you're on a computer, they come up to the right side of the page. Correct. Yep. Yep. So all your options are right there. Uh, let's see. I forgot what what other thing I was going to say. I, uh, handed some tokens out to, uh, a person that was traveling around. Oh, okay. And he um, is down in Southern California hiding a token right now. So there nice. are tokens going to be new tokens out in the wild here soon. Cool. So get ready for those. And that's on the $5 tier. Nice. I also, that's, um, that's what I was going to get to. So two things. One, I was thinking about, we can just do tokens using the lasers. Yeah, absolutely. So we can just get half inch, ply or whatever half inch something and cut the tokens out on the laser. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So I was yeah. thinking about doing that instead of using the whole saw and the, the drill press. Right. Um, and then the other thing is um, we had a listener very, very kindly donate a 16 inch planer. Yes. So we're going to be able to start uh, hopefully cranking out rounds, uh, tree rounds with different trail designs on them for fundraising to go back to uh, off-road trail organizations. Yeah, absolutely. Which also reminds me that we have, let's see, today's Thursday, the 20th. Is that correct? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Uh, We have today and then two more days. We have it until October 22nd to leave any public comment for Moab, the Gemini bridges area. Right, because they extended it. They extended it. Mm -hmm. So we have until October 22nd. so please, 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 if you have not gone over and done that yet, I don't care if you're not an off-roader. Um, Blue Ribbon Coalition just posted a really cool post on Instagram that said it's not about off-roading. Correct. And it's really not. And they they kind of outlined it. There's 400 photography trails that are possibly getting shut down. There's like uh, four or yeah. five hiking trails that are possibly getting shut down. There's... 300 to 400 like uh, uh, vehicle scenery driving trails that are just going to get shut down. Yeah, so um, climbing trails that climbing. are going to get shut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, this is about everybody. Everybody who does any sort of recreation or likes to enjoy the Utah. I don't want to say wilderness because it's not wilderness. <laughs> the Utah outdoors. Um, you need to be paying attention to this and what's going on right there. Absolutely. The so, link will be down in the show description. Mm-hmm. If you have not done so already, please literally halt now and go and do this yeah. because it's that important. It is. It really is. You really need to fill this out. Share this with, you know, share it with your friends. Anybody that ever has ever wanted to go to Moab area or arches. I don't know if it's, it's probably not impacting arches, but they're right next door not to the each National other park, but yeah. yeah, they're, they're right there. Literally. So, you know, it's like, who knows maybe what is happening there might, you know, they might shut down some of the national park who knows. Mm-hmm. So, you know, both of these are, you know, anything is impacted these days. Everything's impacted these days. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, get your friends, get everybody signed up, you know, fill out these forms. The link is in the description down below. Yeah. 100%. So there's, that and update, I really wanted to make Saturday, sure. Saturday, by the way. Saturday is the 22nd. Yep. So that's the last day you can give public comment. Um, please make sure you go do that. Um, another fun update. I don't know if it's fun, but um, uh, there was a meeting on uh, down in near Pismo for Oceana Dunes. Oh, okay. And the APCD, which I always forget what that stands for, um, Air Pollution Control District. There it is. Wow, good job. Um, the APCD for that area there, the San Luis Obispo APCD, um, had a meeting and they came to the conclusion that the air pollution issues at around Pismo are due to the dunes and that it's a naturally occurring air pollution issue. Okay. That's good. It's good, but it's not good because their fix for it now is to keep people out of the air pollution area. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So they're like, we need to try and mitigate dust or people are not going to be allowed to go here anymore because it's harmful to people. 
But if you mitigate it or not, if you limit, if you remove people from the dunes, mm-hmm. then the dust, I it's mean, it still travels into the city. Yeah. So I'm like, they're going down a road by taking this stance that they just took in a, in a public meeting. I'm like, the only way forward then is to now take the, the town of Oceana dunes and delete it from the map and kick everybody out. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, like that's your only way forward. If you're going to kick people out of the dunes, then now you're setting a precedence of anywhere where there's naturally na- naturally occurring air pollution that we're, we're not going to be able to solve. It's a nature problem. It's a nature caused right. nature problem. Right. Unlike, it's unlike, unlike air pollution that like is in Los Angeles, that's a human caused nature problem. Sure. Yeah, that can be fixed with with a lot of work, but like nature caused nature problems. You can't fix. You can't fix them. You can eliminate it. You can eliminate. We could put concrete over the dunes and we wouldn't have that problem, right? So I'm like, I'm like the 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 route they're going down now. They're setting this precedence of they're going to try and continue to mitigate dust issues, which means they're closing 96 more acres of the dunes so that they can play around with dust mitigation uh, testing on those 96 acres. Luckily, the 96 acres are around the outlying areas. They're not really impacting where people go and ride and use for OHV access or for any access to the dunes. So they picked the 96 acres smart, smartly, (laughs) wisely, wisely. There you go. Um, However, it's like that's the precedence they're moving down now is weird. That it, you they, think they if have, it was natural, then you can't eliminate people from it, right? It's like that's a natural problem. I guess I don't know. I mean, if it's something's <laughs> naturally radiated radiation, then you can you don't want to put people in that either. Yeah, but. I mean that's kind of what it reminds me of is um um what was that place in Russia that had the meltdown, the nuclear meltdown, uh, Ch- Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah. yeah, so it's like they're literally they kicked everybody out of the the, the hundred two hundred square miles around Chernobyl, something like that. I'm like. That's what they're going to have to do here as ultimately the fix, quote unquote, to the air pollution issues right in that area. Yeah, but it's yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's natural. Yeah. And so I'm like, I want to. So like I, what what I'm really concerned or questioning is like this is a natural air pollution issue. How much does it actually affect the human? Because people have been living there for long, 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 long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And are people dying of air pollution issues. That's a good question. I don't know that stat. I don't know if that study has been done of trying to put, um, uh, long and breathable health can birth birth of control, birth, birth control, (laughs) birth (laughs) Birth side effects. Um, no, uh, breathing. How many lung medical issues have been documented in that area versus other areas and tried to do a correlatory study. I'm sure there's a way to figure it out. Um, I just don't know if it's been done before, yeah. but yeah, I'm like, okay, no, so they, they've stupid. given in that it's a naturally occurring air pollution issue. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, well then our, our next test is going to be, can we um, reduce the air pollution in that issue? And the only way to figure that out and the only way to keep people safe in the meantime is to keep people out of the area where the air pollution is occurring. Didn't we already go through this? I mean, we had a a year or plus that nobody went in that area. Yes. But the thing is nobody went in that area and the air pollution was still high. That, that proved that people are not causing the air pollution. Correct. Because so by not going in the area, we still, so they're trying to figure out, well, no, it'll just be like a, a a danger zone. Like you can't go there anymore. That's not. Yeah. Because it's going to be harmful to you. Yeah, I think there needs to be a risk assessment, then. right? Like yeah. how, like if you don't go in the area, or if you do go in the area, you're putting yourself. How at likely risk are and, you to die? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Or how likely are you to contract health conditions? I mean, that I, I guess that would depend if I rode a motorcycle or not. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think your right. your risk of of health or injury is greater. Um, due to the OHV activity, which is an inherent risk. And that's what we do. We know that going into this hobby, um, then getting, um, uh, yeah. breath issues. Yeah. I don't know lung what I'm thinking. Cancer lung from issues, salt. Yeah. 
and sand. So the other thing that kind of bugs me about this is that carb is now oh, involved. On board. Yeah, involved. I'm sure. And carb is trying to reduce air pollution issues in the area. And I'm like, carb was set up for air pollution issues, but for human caused air pollution, how to mitigate human caused air pollution issues. I'm, I don't think yeah. carb should be involved with this No. <laughs> so anyways, um, I don't think so. Either. There's uh, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy that they're extending the order of abatement two years rather than just shutting everything down and keeping people out of there, keeping people out of the quote unquote harmful air areas. Um, but they're, they're going down a very sketchy road where, I mean, legally uh, a good lawyer could then, if this passes in two years and they shut everything down because it's a dangerous area to be in, then a good lawyer could argue that you have to kick everybody out of pebble beach. Yeah. Anywhere that any, there's any a, coastal region, you can't have people going yeah. to the coast anymore. Any sand. Yeah. I mean, I guess what is the, what is the actual, what is causing the actual natural, uh, you know, the natural, the, the issue, air pollution, the air, natural air pollution. What is it that, what is the cause of that? Yeah. Is it the ocean? Cause then you can't live by the ocean. Is mm-hmm. it the sand dunes? Is it cause Both. then you can't live by sand dunes? So is there, it- there's two different things they're coding for Pismo. One is the, uh, the PM 10 particles and the PM 2.5 particles, the PM, I forget which one is which I want to say the 2.5 is the sand and dust particles. And the 10 is the salinity, the, okay. the saltation from the sea. And so, yeah, you're going to get the, the salinity, that saltation in any coastal region. Sure. So you're gonna have to kick everybody out of coastal regions. The other thing is if they're going to be closing it down to the PM 10 part particulate, then they're going to have to shut down Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's in the middle of a fucking desert. Yeah. How much, how much if, sand pollution do you think is in around Las Vegas or sure. any desert town? I like, wonder if they can use uh, like something like that as their mitigation, you know, or their rule, right? It's like, well, Vegas, everybody lives in Vegas and it's at this level. Yeah. <laughs> And and we're okay. Well, Nevada's okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So in theory, we should be okay with that here. Yeah. So that that's kind of I, I'm I like, really do think it comes down to a risk assessment. One hundred percent. And that's part of life, right? If Absolutely. you're living a life, you're a human being, anybody, your animals do the same thing. They do risk assessments. Sure. Human beings, every single activity, every decision we do, whether you realize it or not, you are assessing the risk of doing that activity or making that decision. Right. And um it, it's going down a very scary route. A very stupid and I think very short sighted route um, about taking away people's ability to do risk risk assessment for their own health. Yeah. So, I mean, people choose where to live to some extent based on risk assessment. Yeah, totally. I don't want to live in Florida because it gets hit by hurricanes. Well, people don't want to live in California because it has earthquakes. Bath salts. That's why I don't want to live in Florida. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Yeah, I don't want to live in tornado alley because of the risk of tornadoes. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. So I I think, you know, people can make their own risk assessment and choose where to live. mm -hmm. I don't want to live in Arizona because it gets hotter than it does here. Yeah, (laughs) right. (laughs) Freaking Arizonians are crazy. So, all right, let's move (laughs) on to that topic. Yeah, sorry. I I saw that that post came up last night. Corva um, made that announcement last night, last evening, and it kind of I was I went down a deep spiral just getting pissed. Yeah, <laughs> about it. So I had to do a little rant there. Um, anyways, uh, this is a Thursday episode. Yes, which means I think that does it for all the housekeeping updates. Uh, for the most part, mm-hmm. yeah, we have a gift from um from a listener. That's right. That box has been sitting there for a while, for a week <laughs> a at least. Week. Yeah. <laughs> so I know what's in it. So I'm going to yeah. hand it off to you. Okay. It's heavy. It is heavy. It has duct tape holding a postage mailer boxes together. All right. So we got this thing open now. There's packaging bubble wrap. Some more bubble wrap trying to get out of the way without making everything come out. How do we get this to come out without making everything come out? Okay. Here's the first item. Toyota Land Cruiser decal straight off of a vehicle. 
That's pretty cool. And this is like the good ones that were made of metal and flanged to the body panel rather than like oh, the heat, the plastic. glued on plastic ones Ooh, that you nice. see nowadays. That's a good one. I'm going to take that one and uh, hide it when you're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else do we got here. Is there more, more in there? Okay. I don't even know what that is. It looks almost like a moose. I don't know what it is. Is either. this a Canadian? It might be a moose. Is this a Canadian listener? No. The sticker. It's a, it's a sticker. Sticker looks like a moose. Um. All right. So this thing, it's clanky and metally. And it's wrapped in a trash bag. <laughs> and <laughs> duct taped together. <laughs> it looks like an axle shaft. What is that? A 10 spline? So an FJ six or an FJ 40. I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. FJ 40 spline on this guy. Well, that's a different spline than this one. Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't. Mm. Yeah. So these are the splines for this shaft and this but other shaft is have Burfields. They did. They're supposed to be Burfields with a 10 course spline. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six spline on the short shaft and 10 spline on the long shaft. Mm. So, yeah. Um, interesting. So there's a, a ball here that I assume fits in like that. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what uh, it's a, a stub shaft or, you know, for the axle. Or maybe that's the whole axle shaft. Maybe the uh, like exterior. You think it goes like that? Oh, uh, I know. It goes like this. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So that's so the original an, Burfield, maybe? I guess. Yeah. For 40s. Yeah. for an, That would make sense. So the, the inner shaft is 10 spline, of course, which makes sense. I didn't realize the outer shaft was only 6 spline. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But so, that's, a, that's a cool uh, Burfield design or CV joint yeah, design. Yeah, kind of, huh? So big thanks to Dan for sending us some broken parts. For the show, uh, Tyler's handing it to me now. Yep. There you can play around with the ball. <laughs> the neat design. It's got little uh, grease fittings on the inside there. So I don't know how you would send the grease into the ball, but probably just pull it all out and re grease it manually like a bearing. Um, that's pretty cool though. Um, I, this is going to be a fun one to have up on the parts shelf over there. Look, <laughs> look at that, <laughs> that, uh, the break on the splines. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> this is that moment where if we were filming, <laughs> people could, uh, check out this really cool. I'm assuming a 40 FJ 40 axle shaft and stub shaft. Yeah, I believe it is. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's got a really gnarly break. Maybe I'll snap a photo of it and yeah. shoot, show it on IG. So this came from Dan? This came from Dan. Dan I, from where, where? I don't know. It says on the uh, on the packaging. Dan Riley from AK, Arkansas. <laughs> Alaska. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's right. Yep. Alaska. That's what's, cool, what's man. What's Arkansas's abbreviation? A... R, I believe. A R. Yeah. R. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. I was gonna say AS, Alaska. But it's not AS. So A R is Arkansas and then A K is Alaska. A -L yeah, is he got in contact with me on Instagram, said he had some stuff for the shelf and <laughs> nice. uh, sent it on down, which also makes sense more about the moose then. That would there you go. Alaska. He's past Canada. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any mooses, mises in Arkansas. So no, probably well, who knows? There might be. But. <laughs> But yeah, thanks, Dan. That's yeah. cool. That's really That's neat. super cool. I like that uh, the Land Cruiser thing too. Yeah, the that thing's sweet. It's mm -hmm. coming home with me. I don't think so. You can have the blue oval over there. <laughs> 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 yeah, super cool. Thanks, Dan. That was neat. Um, let's see. Any other toys? Anything to update listeners on? Fun no, things? we don't have I any mean, voicemails. No, no voicemails. Did we want to do a couple reviews? Sure. Yeah. Let, no, let's do reviews next week on Monday. Yeah, or let's do them on Monday. Thursday. Yeah, one or the other. Okay. We'll figure out which one you have time. <laughs> Sounds <about>. good. <laughs> yeah. We are almost 40 minutes in. Yeah, so. I know, right? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So 
I know something we both did this weekend, but mm-hmm. did, um, besides that, I didn't do necessarily any off-roading things. On Sunday, I went and did a urban hike with the the misses. Oh, okay. And just went out, got out, and walked around for a while, and got our steps in for the day. And that's a mm-hmm. uh, the majority of what we did on uh, Sunday. I also uh, sold my t- old Tacoma wheels. Oh, congratulations! Thank you, Facebook mm-hmm. Marketplace. Style, <laughs> so that was nice. <laughs> Um, if anybody's looking for some second gen wheels uh, yeah. that are seventeens, let me know. I got some up for sale. Nice. And then, yeah. So um, I have some F one fifty wheels up for sale. There you go. <laughs> yeah, twenties. Mm-hmm. Yep, twenties. If um, oh, did you drive that today? I wanted. To, I did. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, the I'm I'm very happy with the tires, the Yokohamas. The I put the same the extreme all terrains on XATs, the XATs yeah. that you have on Charlotte. Um, and when I ordered them, I ordered the 18 inch, right? Uh, rims. Yeah. And real. And then when I got them, I was like, shit, I have 20 inch rims. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to go buy new wheels. And I literally f- looked for like the cheapest thing I could find on Amazon. And that's what I found. And I was like, those oh. actually look pretty good for being the cheapest thing I could find. Yeah, they do. Um, they look good. Yeah. And so uh, I put them all on and I had to fight with Les Schwab about it. <laughs> Oh, really? Why? <laughs> they charged me $419 to mount wheels, to mount the tires on the wheels Balance and them. get TPMS sensors oh. and uh, program the TPMS to the computer. Why couldn't they use the TPMSs that came out of your other wheels? Because I didn't have them dismount the other wheels that same trip. Mm. Um, And so, but I realized afterwards, how did you get around in your vehicle without wheels? I took Uh, them the wheels and tires got it and said, Hey, can you guys put these on? Yeah. (laughs) So they charged me though on the receipt. They charged me for mount dismount balance and disposal. And all I was having them do was mount because the balance was, I just threw beads in the balancing beads in them. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm looking at the receipt and I was like, you guys charged me $51 per wheel tire to do a mount dismount balance and disposal. Right. And all you did and all, mount. I, all you did was mount and they're like, yeah, it's just all one package. And I was like, why do you guys not have pricing for just mounting a tire? Like, and she goes, no, not really. I was like, okay, well then cool. I want, I want to get all my, my money's worth out of here for everything you charged me for. So can I come back tomorrow and have you guys take these wheels, put them on my truck and then take the old wheels and dismount the tires and dispose of the tires. And she goes, no, that's more labor involved. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> you already paid. I'm, I'm paying yeah. you for this. I already paid you for all these things. I haven't, I've only gotten one of the four things done. So I'm going to bring the truck back tomorrow and you guys are going to finish the job. And she goes, no, well, we're going to have to charge you. And I said, no, you already, you don't. Did. You already did. Like, <laughs> this is what I'm paying for. And I went back and forth with her for like 20 minutes before I was, before she was like, fine, you know what? Just bring your truck back tomorrow. We'll take care of it. It's okay. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so you brought your truck back and then what did they do? They uh, took the old wheels off of the truck, put the new ones on the truck. And then um, they took the tires off of my old wheels, wheels and disposed of the tires and then gave me back the wheels. Interesting. So that I could okay. sell them. And I was like, she goes, yeah, it was more labor. And I was like, the only way that's more labor is because you have an extra set of wheels in the shop that you have to walk around <laughs> while you're doing this. Like, otherwise it's the same amount of work as if you were mounting and dismounting the tires on one set of wheels, um, except I'm not having you balance anything. So I don't know where you guys are coming from. And like, so anyways, I went back and forth with her for a while before she finally, I don't yeah. want to say caved, but before she just got fed up with arguing with me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyways, that was the, that How was Les Schwab. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But it looks good. Mm-hmm. It does. It looks good. It drives great now. Um, I'm not pulling super hard to one side or the other. And um, if I take the truck to do any snow camping this year with the camping trailer, I'm not uh, going to be worried about the tires. Right. You <laughs> can actually the air snow. these down. I can actually air these down. Exactly. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the noise isn't that. I mean, for the extreme all terrains, no. it's they don't have a ton of highway noise. I haven't noticed any highway noise, um, mainly because my turbos are louder. So, <laughs> why is your turbo louder? Because it goes. 
Oh, louder can, than, but it's louder the, than it, any tire noise. Okay. So it's yeah. not louder than anything you, than your previous tires that you know. Not that I know of. I haven't noticed them at all. Yeah. yeah I didn't notice a difference. <clears throat> I noticed a little bit of a difference, but I went from like, you know, a highway tire, yeah. <laughs> the stock Tacoma ones to, yeah. you know, an extreme all terrain. So there was a little bit of a difference, but it wasn't that big. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I would pleasantly surprised with how quiet mm-hmm. those ATs are. Yeah. And I really like the tread pattern of the ATs, the X, the X ATs. Mm-hmm. I went back and forth with between doing their regular AT or the X AT. Um, and I was like, I like that tread pattern of the X AT. And, uh, I wasn't going to go to the mud trains because I'm still going to be towing with the F one fifty. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, I like that tread pattern. The XAT is better. At least it'll do better for a more universal usage for towing as well as a little bit of whatever I do off-roading with the truck. Got so it. Next time I go into Gold Lake or go play in the snow in the truck. Sure. Yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. So, well, that you know, besides talking about what we did on Saturday, mm-hmm. um, what else did you do? The only other thing I did was um, the <laughs> I had a, a fun uh, play around with the forerunner. Um, what do you mean? I, because I'm trying to make the Rubicon trip, the mm-hmm. Rocktoberfest this weekend. Um, I just patch welded the frame together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, did you I, put patches on? No, I just, uh, welded up the cracks. Okay. So I drilled holes at the end of the cracks where I could, and then welded it all up, um, and just turned up the heat, uh, on the welder and, um, burned it all burned in. Did it in deep. Uh, burned it in deep because there was there's some places where the spring hangers are that and the, that front cross member the radio supports you just can't get a welder in there <laughs> right <laughs> and so yeah. I just burned it in deep as good best as I could and um, that crack on the driver's side where the the spring hangers are it was bad mm-hmm. like bad bad yeah. like nothing it was cracked all the way around four sides was it like there was nothing holding the radiator support to and the body mount to the frame anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, oh geez. <laughs> yeah, I need to be welding this up if I want to drive this at all, at all, at all. So I welded all that up. Um, I didn't put any like patches of uh, steel over it. I didn't, um, I didn't fix it for like a permanent fix, right? So uh, it's fixed enough where I should be able to do the trail no problem one weekend. And then uh, yeah. probably be taking it down. So yeah, it'll it should hold for a weekend, mm-hmm. one trip. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see how that goes on the trip. Um, and then also, uh, we've been talking about my overheating issues. Mm-hmm. And so the last episode we talked about it was I removed the fan shroud. Yeah, and you were you drove around a little bit, and things were looking good. Yeah, and so just in my little you know five to seven minutes on the highway, things were looking great. And so uh, I drove the rig out to Woodland yeah. and back and uh, temperatures looked awesome. And so I did that Friday night before skills day because I was like, well, if I'm going to be having to take the rig out to skills day, I want to make sure that we can make it, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes down highway 50. Sure. Without any issues. So um, I drove the rig out to Woodland Friday night, came back. Temperature did not go over 203 degrees. Wow. That's awesome. Um, with the okay. AC on. Nice. Uh, so I was like, cool. So that's the issue is I wasn't getting enough airflow through the radiator at highway speeds. That's interesting because the fan was blocking the airflow while the fan was on. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder if you're going to get hot at low speeds now because you don't have a shroud so far. No. Um, so what I did to test that was I took the fan and um, put it up to 190 degrees turn on. So it turns on at 190 and then turns off at 180. Okay. So 10 degrees lower than what its turn on temp is. So and the thermostat is set for 180 degrees. So I set the fan up to uh, uh, 190 or 195 and then let it go down so that to see if it would cool the engine off from 195 back to the thermostat temperature. Sure. Okay. And it did just fine. <laughs> it did it idling. And then I did it again while revving the engine. I kept it at 2000 RPMs and it still pulled the temperatures down. So in theory, I should be just fine for any kind when of rock you were, calling. So you were idling at 2000 RPMs. So there well, was, you don't, you don't idle at well, 2000 RPMs. Well, I mean, you were, <laughs> but you were stationary. Yes. 
Yeah. So you didn't have, so you weren't driving around at all having any wind come through you. No. So I yeah. mean, that's a pretty good test because yeah. if, if the fan can do it without any additional air coming at you, mm -hmm. then it should be able to do it when there is additional they, yeah. forced air coming through. Yep. Got it. Yep. So, um, but that was my issue. Um, however, when I came back from skills day, <laughs> okay. And it was, I think it was 80, 85 yeah, it was air temperature. Mm hmm. I was coming back from skills day. Uh, the temperature in the ECU kept creeping up and up and up and up on the way back from skills day. And it got up to 218, 219 degrees by the time I got home. So I'm like, what is going on? So I stopped in at the warehouse to drop off all the event booth and everything. And I've got coolant puking out of the front end of the vehicle. What? And I was like, okay, so this is, this explains why I'm raising in temperatures because I'm not holding pressure because coolant is just pouring out. So I was like, what broke? Why am I losing pressure? Did, did I blow you, a radiator hose? What's going on? Did you not put your cap back in? I did put the cap in okay. just fine. <laughs> it was the drain plug. Yeah. So the drain plug is a little plastic butterfly yeah. plug. Like yeah. you've seen a lot of radiators. It had stripped for some reason. It was a new radiator. It was a brand new radiator, brand new drain plug. Um, and it was leaking. Like it had a solid stream of coolant coming out of it. And I was like, what the heck? And so I tried to tighten it down a little bit and the O ring was broken and started coming out of the, the housing right there. Huh. So I tightened it down some more and it just kept spinning. It wasn't tightening down. And so I was like, shit, the drain plug stripped. And so I was like, well, I need to go find a new drain plug now. I don't know what the threads are in this thing. And so I drove it from here with it le leaking coolant over to the Napa right down the road. I was like, I need a drain plug. And they're like, okay, what, what, what car do you have? I was like, it's an aftermarket radiator. It doesn't, I don't, it doesn't work. It's not an OEM you mean, part. You didn't ask for a bucket first. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he goes, he goes, yeah, I can't help you unless you know the threads of it by chance. I was like, I don't know the threads. The only way to figure out the threads is to dump coolant all over your parking lot. He goes, yeah, let's not do that. And I said, I agree. I was like, where does that leave us then? He goes, we need to know the threads. And I was like, fuck. All right. So I drove it home real quick and made it home before, without any overheating issues, parked it in my driveway and threw a bucket under it. Um, and then just let it sit there for that night, uh, Saturday night. And then Sunday morning, I came back out to it, uh, pulled the drain plug out, let it all drain, let the coolant just went into the bucket, whatever, and then started testing the threads. Um, and the threads were kind of working. Like I went and looked up, you know, what are that Napa? They were showing the most common thread type was nine sixteenths, 18 thread, which okay. is a uh, nine sixteenths fine thread or half inch 20 thread. Um, they're both very, very close to each other. So I went down to uh, Ace Hardware, bought those two bolts because my thread checkers don't go up that big took those two bolts, brought them back and they would kind of like the, the half inch 20 went in, but that it only went in like halfway. It didn't continue in. Hmm. So I was like either the thread pitches off or were a tapered thread. Yeah. So I'm like, huh? So I tried the nine sixteen eighteen, 18 and that didn't go in at all. It was too big. The bolt diameter is too big. So I'm like, all right, we're looking about a half inch, but half inch fine thread is not correct. And 12 millimeter, uh, 12 millimeter by 1.25, uh, thread. If it was metric, um, didn't fit. It was too small. I could move it just barely in and out of the threads in the, in the radiator and 14 millimeter was too big in diameter. So I was like, it's not half inch 20. It's not 12 meter, 12 millimeter or 14 millimeter. It's like a 13 millimeter and it's not nine sixteenths. I was like, that, those are that that's all the sizes. <laughs> Right <laughs> around to whatever this is. And I was like, so I just did a quick Google search. What is close to nine, 16, 18 and, and then uh, in threads. And then I was like, what is close to half inch 20? What is close to 12, 125 and 14, 125 sure. and the common denominator that Google spit out that was close to everything. All those things was quarter inch NPT. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, Oh, 
Well, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any of that laying around the shop? <laughs> I don't know. I run a I run an air uh, an air company, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was like, everything that we do is in quarter inch MPT. So do you get one of these valves out that are sitting here on the table so you could turn it on and off? No, I didn't <laughs> because they stuck out too much. But what I did do, I was, so I tested it with quarter inch MPT. I had a bunch of fittings in my garage, and so I was yeah. like, I tested. It, I was like. That's what it is. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. That makes a lot of sense actually. Um, and so I went down to Ace Hardware or back down to Home Depot and I bought uh, an L, a 90 degree. Okay. With a plug in it. Got it. So a yeah. quarter inch MPT plug and uh, put that all in and got it all tightened down. So now not only is it all airtight and it like, can like handle up to 300 PSI, your radiator never gets that high. It gets to like 15. Right. Um, before the cap releases, it should. Um, and so like, I was like, well, now I've got all these fittings in, but now the drain plug, as you unscrew the drain it plug, it doesn't straight it down, goes straight down and doesn't get everywhere. That's awesome. And so I was like, that, should that be was a really one. cool find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now if I ever need to drain the radiator again, it's going to be super clean. I'm not going to get coolant everywhere. Um, and everything is fits up perfectly. Wow. So that's that's an interesting learn, right? But yeah, that's weird. So I wonder if now you're not going to have any issues because you're, you can hold pressure Uh, probably. So I went and drove it around after that. And like, I ran it like at 3,500 RPMs down that long stretch behind my house at like 10, 15 miles an hour engine didn't care. didn't get above 203, 205 again. So. And you never noticed any leaking before then? Mm-mm. Nope. So sometime between Friday night and when I came home from skills day on Saturday, um, the drain plug got stripped <laughs> and I never touched the drain plug in that time. That's weird. So I don't know if like Sean was playing a fun prank on me and reached down and tried to like mess with my drain plug or what, but probably one of those MFers. Probably but they can be assholes sometimes. Yeah. Um, no, so I don't, I'm just guessing it was just plastic drain plug and it got heated uh, getting hot in the radiator, made the plastic a little bit malleable and couldn't hold it. Couldn't hold it. Interesting. And then yeah. me trying to tighten it down while it was malleable, um, stripped it. Right. So now I've got brass fittings in there, um, which I was a little worried about putting brass into aluminum, but like, the brass is going to be softer than the aluminum, so it should be able to give and, and expand and contract just fine with uh, Teflon tape on it and not have any leaking issues. So, okay. I wouldn't know. Yeah. So um, anyways, yeah, I think I think the forerunner with the frame patched and the, all the overheating stuff figured out and done with um, should be a great trip this weekend. <laughs> Fingers crossed for you, buddy. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So that yeah. said, now that we mm-hmm. now that you uh have we've kind of disclosed where we went on Saturday. Yeah. Uh we went out to the Metal Cloak Skills Day. Yeah, yeah. which was a lot of fun. So you went out there as a booth, a vendor. Mm-hmm. Um and you had to get out there pretty early. Yeah, they the it was the event was supposed to start at 8 a.m. Yeah. So uh I wanted to just make sure we were there and set up by 7 30. That way we have plenty of time to say hi to early people coming in and Mm -hmm. kind of entertain them as them as they're waiting around. Um, and I got there at seven (laughs) 40. So (laughs) that's funny. Sean was good. He got there like seven. (laughs) Yeah. Sean was there way early. Yep. I heard he was, uh, driving around on some of the motorcycle ramp or something. Yeah. He went and flexed his, uh, Lincoln, uh, sedan out on the ramp and one of the workers there got upset with him. (laughs) Yep. That's what I heard. (laughs) That is funny. So, yeah, uh, I yeah. got a text at <laughs> Oh, was that 9 what it says 9:14. It was a little later. Yeah. That's interesting. I thought it was earlier than that. Mm. But it was yeah, so 9:14, the booth next to you, the Air Med. Mm-hmm. Uh my um the assistant's cousin. Yeah. Uh was working the booth. Yep. And so she was talking to you guys and mm-hmm. I think she noticed the snail on, on Kermit Yep. and then texted me and, um, the assistant and said uh, that, uh, asked where we were and I said, I'll be there. <laughs> and so I thought yep. it was supposed to start. I thought it was starting at 10, eight o'clock, 8 a.m. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I showed up 
at like 11 Mm -hmm. and I tried to turn in down to you guys Uh and there was some like, you know, kids or some, (laughs) some people work in the, that area and said, they like stopped me and they're like, uh, this is a Jeep event. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, I'm here with a vendor and they're like, okay, come on in. Yeah. I got stopped when I came in and, uh, the guy that was kind of directing traffic in the morning, he goes, Oh, cool. Yeah. He goes, you're here for skills day. Not the, not the visitor appreciation. I was like, yeah, skills day. He goes, okay, cool. Um, we're having all the participants line up over there. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, you, I, I look like a participant. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you look like a participant. I look like a newbie. A second gen <laughs> forerunner on forties. Yeah. That has beat up dented body panels everywhere and hey, solid axle. I was like, Oh, maybe you okay. just bought that vehicle. I guess it's true. Yeah. But I was uh, that, that just kind of made me laugh, but also like was a big shock to my ego at the same time. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm a vendor. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm a vendor. He goes, oh, okay, yeah, just go on anywhere. Then I was like, okay, that's funny. <laughs> so, anyways, that was the fun start to the day, and then, um, yeah, they had a great turnout. They did. They had a big turnout. Mm-hmm. Big turnout for Skills Day, and uh, it's just it's a great event, and Metal Cloak puts it on. Yep. Uh, so Matson and uh, Will and everybody else over Metal Cloak, uh, big shout out to them. Um, there's and we got to go this time and we we're and they were okay with it all because um, they're starting to sell Toyota parts. Yeah, is that why they were okay <laughs> with us bringing our Toyotas in? <laughs> yep, that's that funny. and I have I have a four door Rubicon, so I kind of right. like snuck in and hid there for a while. Yeah, that's the yeah. that's the trick. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, no, they're, they're selling a uh, lower control or control arms for fourth and fifth gen forerunners Correct. for the rear, the rear end now. Yeah. So there was uh, also a forerunner in skill or there was a, there was a Toyota in skills day. Oh, nice. One of the participants. Mm-hmm. That's an, cool. An FJ cruiser. Oh, I missed him Yep. or her, whoever they him. were. Him. It was a him. Cool. Yeah. And it was funny cause he was parked like in the middle of the vendor area. Mm hmm. And everybody was walking around it. Oh, really? <laughs> I think because mainly it was not a Jeep. Yeah. Right. So they're like, yeah. oh, let's, this is different. Uh-huh. Let's look at this. Yeah. So that was, I think it was funny that the FJ Cruiser sort of stole the show. Yeah. You know, but, <laughs> that is fun. But it was neat. I thought mm-hmm. there was a lot of interest in Morphlate. I was at mm-hmm. the booth for a little while, uh, you know, and a lot of people came. I, I know they had a setup that everybody had to go buy all the, those vendor booths and mm-hmm. get a quick chat and mm-hmm. you know, uh, or, um, what do you want? A sales pitch or some, whatever you want. It's call supposed it. to be educational, right? Okay. The intent is to set up and have vendors there that are providing some sort of educational content to the participants. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so they just also happen to be vendors that have stuff as well that the, that the newbies could use, but it, sure. it's a really good pairing because it's stuff that they can actually use. Right. Like, uh, life flight, med flight mm-hmm. stuff like air tools to air down and tools to repair your tires with. Yeah. Um, Cal four wheel and Corva. Exactly. So um, it was really neat. I love the way they do it, the way they have it set up um, and they split everybody up into multiple groups. So you've got one group going around doing the trail rides while another group is getting educated by all the vendors that are there. And um, yeah, it was fun. We had it. We had a, a quite a few big crowds around the Morphlate booth, which was kind of fun um, because it's always one of those things. And it's just, it's fun to me every single time going to events and talking to people about Morphlate because you kind of explain it there at a booth with people looking at the product and they're kind of like, Oh yeah, that's a, that's a cool idea. I get it. I get it. Maybe not for me kind of thing. Or they'll be like, yeah, that's cool. Think about getting one or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then you go from that to putting it on their vehicle and airing them down and airing them back up. And they're like, Oh my God, that was amazing. And it's like, you see that mental flip right there. Um, and that's like, I I just, it blows me away each time that there's that big of a reaction change to people from just talking to them and showing them versus showing it and experiencing it. I should say. Absolutely. So it was fun to see, like you would talk to people and you're like, what do you air down to? And they're like 35. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, let's take you down, take down you some down more up. here. Let's you take this out there. Mm-hmm. Let's hook you it up. Let's air you down. And at the end of the day, we'll air you come back and we'll yeah. air you up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was, it was fun to see their, you know, like, oh wow, this is, yeah, this works. It's really fast to air down. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. But then I think it was the air up 
side mm -hmm. where you, oh, connect everything, connect the compressor to this one port. And now you're airing up all four tires and people yeah. are like, wait, I don't have to go to every single tire and sit and yeah. air up at that tire anymore. Uh -huh. you're like, nope. This, this is literally what you do. You yeah. hang out and talk to people. Hang out, talk right. to people and check it out, check it out yeah. every once in a while. Yep. And so that was, that was cool. And it just, it drills home the idea because there there's, we meet people every single event. They're just like, I don't air down because of two reasons. One is it's a pain in the ass and they don't want to have to take the time to air down and then take the time to air back up afterwards. And it's yeah. like, it's not a pain in the ass. We've made it painless. And the other one is people don't air down because they don't have a way to air back up. Right. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know where the next gas station is that I can pull into an air back up at. And I'm like, this is, I mean, airing down is the least expensive thing you can do to increase your offered performance. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the cheapest thing that you can do to your vehicle to get the most off-road mm -hmm. uh, um, performance. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, later in the day, I got to talk about recovery stuff. We'll get to that in a bit, but it's like at the same time, it's also the least expensive recovery thing you can do sure, right. by keeping yourself from getting in a recovery situation in the first place by airing down and getting more traction. Yep. So, um, I was just like, man, life is so much easier with this. It's not a pain in the ass. You don't have to worry about things like, and it's just, it's just fun to me to see them experience it and see that light bulb finally go off right? <laughs> or go on. Yeah. So. I remember a story from maybe last year skills day, or maybe it was the one before that. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was, I don't know, but you aired somebody down and they came back to you at the end of the day and they're like, I didn't need to use my lockers at all. Yeah. Like, you know, it's amazing. You air yeah. down and I, you get so much more traction. Yep. Mm hmm. So, yeah, we had another uh, lady, they were sisters and they were going out. They had brand new, well, new to them, uh, JK, mm -hmm. four door JK. And they were running all the trails at street pressure sure. with their street, with their sway bars connected. Oh man. And so not only I got to talk to him, I was like, I was like, you guys have to go run the trails again. They're like, no, that was scary. Like they went and did the diff dragger um, okay. obstacle. Yeah. Well, on full street pressure with no sway bars, like, or with their sway bars connected. And they were like, that was scary. We slid all over the place and we couldn't keep control of the vehicle. And I was like, let's air you down. Let's get you down to 12 PSI. And then um, let's also disconnect your sway bars. It will be a whole new vehicle. Right. And they're like, no, I don't know if we can do it. I was like, trust me, like, just go do it. Don't do the diff dragger first. Do a different one first that you're used that you did before whole new. And they came back. They're like, at the end of the day, they're like, oh my God, it was yeah. a whole new vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right. yes, this is, this is why we're here today. Right. So yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I know it was fun to see people. Um, you know, I got to see John and Renee and, mm -hmm. uh, saw stellar built, saw, um, Sue mm -hmm. and Chai bun from bone well trail welders. Mm -hmm. Um, I went up and talked to will when he, his station was like closing and okay. I was talking to him for a little bit. And just seeing how he's doing, how's Metal Cloak, what's mm -hmm. going on. And he's like, hey, I, I'm sorry, but I need to go. Uh, I, I think I have to run the recovery section. Oh, yeah. You know? And, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, oh, okay. Well, do you need me to put my Toyota, get my Toyota stuck down there so that a Jeep can pull a Toyota out? And he that was doesn't like, happen. We've covered that in a previous I episode know. here. <laughs> and he's like, that would be funny. And I'm like, well, how do you normally do it? Like, how do you, he's like, well, we just get a rig stuck and then we drive another one down and then we hook a winch up to the front and pull them out. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I don't have recovery <laughs> points on the front of my vehicle. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I'm like, we normally just wrap it around a sh uh, the leaf spring. If it Probably not never the best happens. idea to do for a newbie demonstration. <laughs> exactly. And so that's, he's like, I'm like, let's, let's just not use my rig. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, that's fair. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And at that point I went up to see stellar built and saw, um, saw them and saw a bunch of welders and then rode with, uh, Aussie Justin. Okay. Back in his rig, back to mm -hmm. the training of how to use a winch. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, because El Dorado search and rescue, typically shows up to skills day and uh, they run the winch demonstration. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they kind of no showed. They forgot that the event was going on. <laughs> yeah. Will said they double booked. Oh, that's what it was. And they went to the other one and they were, and then they called like metal cloak called them and like, Hey, where are you at? And they're like, we're at this event. 
Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but you're supposed to be here. He's like, uh, sorry. Whoopsies. <laughs> so guess who got to do the winch demonstration? One of the admins for NorCal four by four rescue. Yeah, buddy. So, uh, Will came over and he goes, Tyler, I'll do auto search and rescue is not coming. Can you go and do the winch demonstration? I was like, you want me to do the winch demonstration? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to, but I'm the most qualified person here to do that. And he goes, well, that and you like talking a lot. And I was like, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> he, so. he told me uh, that he was going to ask you. Uh -huh. And I was like, you want Tyler to do it? <laughs> He's like, and then he's like, well, you guys just talked to Justin from Factor 55, so you got to know something. <laughs> <laughs> I should have sat there and played that episode for him. <laughs> right. Here, sit no. here for an, two hours and listen to this. Yeah. Um, no, so it was it was really fun. I, I love recovery stuff. Um, I'm a big recovery nerd. And so I've watched the recovery, the, the winching demonstration in the past. And it's typically always just been like, hey, Here's how to hook up a winch. Okay. Hey, we're going to pull this rig off of the rock now and they do it. And it's like 10 to 15 minutes. And I was like, I want to educate people like not just in winching, but recovery situations. And so I kind of without, without talking to Will or Matson about it, I was just like, I'm going to go through like a, a, a recovery class and educate people on rigging and safe ways to do things and things to consider. And the winching demonstration is only going to be like two minutes <laughs> of <Right>. this whole thing <laughs> um, because I want people to be educated about what is going on here, not just watching somebody get winched off a rock. Yeah. And so I kind of, as soon as they were like, yeah, you can do it. I was immediately like, all right, this is what I'm doing. I'm not going to tell them <laughs> see how this goes. <laughs> and so uh, it definitely went a little bit longer than I was into than I wanted it to go. But um, they did a good job at hurrying me along by uh, turning on the Jeep and starting the winch in before we were talking about the winching demonstration. I was like, okay, I get it. I get it guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was really cool. We had pretty yeah. much everybody there. Yeah, was hanging did. around was, uh, and I, they seemed pretty engaged. You got a lot mm -hmm. of questions and yep. you covered the gamut. I mean, you covered from tools to recovery equipment, you know, straps and um, shackles and, you know, uh, different situations, different to use situations them in. to use them. Mm -hmm. When's good for kinetic, when's good for um, static, static. Thank mm -hmm. you. You know, and then, yeah. And then you talked about where is a safe place to be when winching and mm -hmm. yeah, you, you covered a whole bunch of things. So mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was really neat. I actually had God, 10 to 15 people come up to me back at the Morflate booth afterwards and say, thank you so much for that. The recovery class. It was really informational. It was a lot of stuff that I'm probably not going to remember. And I was like, yeah, but at some point you're going to, when you come and see this again somewhere, you're going to be like, oh yeah, no, that's, that's, I remember that part. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, that's the key component, right? Did you, did you have any feedback from Will or Madsen? Not really. Um, either way. Yeah. I heard um, that Madsen said that you're not going to do it ever again because you <laughs> talk too long. <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, if they asked him to do it, they should know he talks a lot. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> they, they listen to the podcast. Yeah. They know. <laughs> they do know. So, yeah, I was like, eh, I'm, and that's fine. Um, and if they, want me to do it again, then we'll just, I'll just be like, okay, what do you guys want covered then? Mm -hmm. Because, um, the big thing that I am the most care about is working load limits and breaking strengths and knowing the physics. If you know the physics behind what you're doing, then you can adapt whatever recovery situation you're working on to whatever physics you have in play. And that's really what recovery comes down to. In my opinion, there's no like, sit there. Yeah. A lot of times it could be single poles, right? And off-road stuff, but there's times when you got to set up a snatch block and do a double pull or you got to do a misdirected double pull. Right. <laughs> um, or, or this other weird stuff where you got to lift the whole front end of a vehicle up to clear a rock and move it over at the same time. Sure. Like, and I was like, there's, there's too many situations where just doing a demonstration isn't really going to be helpful, but if we can teach the people what the physics are in play so that they can then learn what those physics are in whatever situation they got themselves into. Then they can figure out a way to get the vehicle out safely, knowing the forces that are going to be in play. And that's kind of the angle I was going for. <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was standing there with Julia and 
uh, who was doing the air med mm-hmm. care stuff. And she asked me, she's like, they keep saying two to one. What's two to one. And uh. so I had to, so I don't know either. She wasn't completely paying attention or mm-hmm. I had to um, re explain that to her about what two to one went. So yeah, I mean, so I, for your knowledge yeah. next time, maybe uh, go into that a little bit more in detail. Well, if we were, yeah, I wouldn't have set up the winching situation in a two to one configuration, the right. demonstration. And that's what they set up. So I had to keep kind of mentioning it because that's what was set up for people to look at. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, the mm-hmm. only reason I think they would do that is to show a snatch block, but yeah. And show off some of the equipment. Like it was kind of nice because you had all the equipment out, out there to, to point at and say, okay, this is here in this system. This is what we're using here. This is what we're using here. Sure. Um, but doing two to one pull mechanical advantage pulls is a definitely more of an advanced uh, mm-hmm. tactic for recovery. Sure. So yeah, it's level two. It's level two. And these people were like, what's a kinetic rope <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. So um, What's the difference between a synthetic and a cable? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, we had a lot of good questions come up there. People were asking some good questions um, and getting those answered. And then there were a lot of other good questions that came up afterwards. Um, and uh, a bunch of four or five people came up to me afterwards and started asking me radio questions. Yeah. Well, in the end <laughs> of that, you're like, I'm a huge radio nerd. Oh, you're always like somebody asked, how do you, who, how do you communicate? Yep. Who's, who's in charge? You know, and then you're like, I'm a big fan of radios because it's easy to everybody can hear what's going on in a radio. You can communicate to everybody all at once, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm a huge radio nerd. So if anybody wants to talk radios, I'll be over at the Morphlate booth. (laughs) Yeah. So you threw that out there. I did. And they came and talked to me, which was fun. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It was I had a really good time that day. It was it's Prairie City. There's no shade. So it got sunny and hot again. It wasn't quite as hot as it was out at the vintage truck, Toyota vintage truck, NorCal truck fest. Out in Woodland. Yeah. Out in Woodland. But it's still, it was, it was pretty borderline. Yeah. It got pretty warm out there for sure. Uh, yeah. All after the event was over is it, well, is there anything else you want to talk about? Not really. I mean, that was, there was, yeah, it was a great event. I enjoy skills day every time. Um, and so I always look forward to when they have it and I was looking forward to the invite that will sends me. So there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After the event was over, um, Mm -hmm. I went, I aired down and went out and played a little bit. (laughs) That's right. You got to go play with people and I just drove around and I did every, for the most part, I did everything except for, um, the pipeline, the big pipeline. Yeah. The big pipeline. Mm -hmm. I drove, I did the one next to it, drove up on the uh, pyramid to get my photo and you know, for Instagram, it was funny because I did the harder side of the pyramid. Okay. And at one point I got pretty twisted up and turned well, at a weird angle. Uh-huh. And so I reversed and realigned and got up it and I hopped out and there were some motorcycle guys in the motorcycle area that uh-huh. when I hopped out, they clapped and they said, nice job. You know? And I was like, I did it for the gram. Got to <laughs> I need my photo. So yeah, yeah, that was, that was funny. But, um, at one point I was down at the bottom and I was watching Chai, uh, drive up. Ozzy just drove up and then Chai was sort of struggling and driving up. And then I was sitting down there and I was talking to Sue. Okay. And Sue was like, Hey, we're finally wheeling together. Oh, Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. wow, you know, yeah, it's at Prairie city, but here we are. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I'll count that as this is wheeling. Yeah. She didn't wheel though. She uh, literally <laughs> drove down there, parked, watched her husband wheel up pipe li- pipeline. Uh-huh. And then she, we were going, and then while we were talking, we we're like, man, it's hot. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I don't think I'm going to be out here anymore. I think I'm just like, let's call it a day. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we all right. And so we, I drove up to, <laughs> and then started airing up and then they drove up to the, uh, where their trailer was, where their trailer was mm-hmm. and loaded up and mm-hmm. you know, and we, and they left. Gotcha. You know, and I was like, so we never wheeled together. Yeah. I, I don't get like, it was funny because we were joking about it on Facebook. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so great to wheel with you, Sue. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, he, and she's like, we didn't wheel. And yeah. I was like, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So then I aired up and mm-hmm. uh, tried to leave. Yeah. How, how'd that go? Why did you attempt to leave? Yeah. The, my starter <laughs> wasn't starting and my no. starter starter wasn't, wasn't working. working. <laughs> no. 
So my starter is. Do you want to explain that? Have we ever explained that? I think we talked about it. Okay. I think we talked about it on the glue tread episode. Okay. It was also in the glue tread video. It mentioned it. Uh, here's your starter starter. Yeah. <laughs> so my starter has been sort of like slowly dying. Mm-hmm. And for, but if you tap it mm-hmm. with any, like a hammer or I was, what was I was using a, a cre- wrench. big wrench for a while. Mm-hmm. And then this was a, a breaker bar. Uh, if you tap it, it usually starts right up. So yeah. I, in, in Moab, mm-hmm. I had this, or just before Moab, I think I ha- was having a problem. Mm-hmm. And so when I bought the alternator in Moab, I also bought a starter. Okay. Because I was like, I don't want to be stuck on a trail without a starter. Yeah. Like that's just bad, bad juju. Yeah. So I had a starter with me. But it, it would been- always, it, yeah, this, mm-hmm. if it wasn't starting, if you just hopped out, walked around, tapped it, two or three times jumped back in your rig it started yeah so i was like i it's still working it's still working you I just, just have an a extra step and you're starting now <laughs> yeah yeah at times yeah and usually it's not like every single time it's no. just once in a while it's like once per trip maybe yeah kind of yeah. maybe once or twice but yeah so uh, uh, besides the glue tread trip it was like <laughs> but we were starting and stopping a lot on that trip we were that it became an ongoing joke that's where the starter starter came from exactly <laughs> so uh, the starter finally kicked the bucket. Yeah. It wasn't starting. You yeah. know, how Matt, I had you as the starter starter with mm-hmm. a, a breaker by tapping the starter. It wasn't clicking over. No. So I was like, okay, it's time. It's time. And then Will's is like, Will was there and he's like, well, let's just push it and you can bump start it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's try that. And so we <laughs> went and we were on gravel. So it yeah. like the tires locked up. But it's like the it truck slide, slide rather than yeah, continue the rotation. Grip. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I was like, all right, just push me into the shade over on the side and I'm going to change my starter out. Yeah. At which point I was like, wait, you brought that with you? Oh, and yeah. You're like, yeah, it's been in the truck since Moab. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you've been carrying around a new starter with you every single trip we did this summer, including today, just in for this situation to happen. Absolutely. <laughs> Because I didn't ever want to get stranded. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I thought it was great. And I haven't been because nope. I have the tools to fix it Yep. and replace it if need be. It's just, yeah, occasionally there was, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe I could have changed it out earlier mm-hmm. and, you know, not had to hop out of my rig at, you know, 30 times or whatever. Yeah. But, but then you wouldn't have got as much exercise that day. Yeah. Or we wouldn't have the fun name of a starter starter. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, so the starter finally died. Mm-hmm. I changed out the starter, put in the new one, connected it all up, and then the truck still wouldn't start. It wouldn't start. It wouldn't turn over. It just kind of clicked so you could hear the starter you relay hear this, going. Yeah, you can hear it. Exactly. You could hear the starter spinning, but it didn't. the solenoids wasn't happening, which was yeah. what was happening with the old starter. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I said, well, it's got to be the battery. Yep. I bet my battery's low. You know, we were clicking it a bunch, trying to get it go. I was using the compressor, mm-hmm. you know, which I don't think those things should wear a, a starter or a battery down. Not, not with the alternator going. Yeah. Well, I didn't have the truck running for the air compressor. Oh yeah. It'll totally wear it down then. No. Oh, well then maybe that was yeah. what it was. <laughs> yeah. The, the 10 six is pull uh, 90 amps peak and then um, 50 to 60 amps running. Wow. And considering your battery is probably a 50 amp hour battery, maybe 60. I don't know what the yellow tops are. Yeah. 60 amp hour battery. I mean, if it, if the compressor runs for 10 minutes, you've taken 10% of that battery away. Yeah. Well, that might've been the yeah. issue yeah. right there. Yeah. So anyways, I needed, so we tested the batteries at 12.1, 12.11. Yep. 12.11 V. Yep. And uh, it almost immediately after connecting it to your batteries and then to my battery, um, it started right up. Yep. So maybe mm-hmm. I won't, maybe I'll put it, throw a jump box in there now. Yeah. <laughs> and because I was going to go out and get another battery figuring that it's, it's bad, but it, maybe mm-hmm. it just was low because of the compressor the compressor. Yeah. And I'll drive it around and do some tests that way and mm-hmm. see if it starts failing again. Yeah. You could have had um, a combination of the two things, right? Where your, your old starter had the issue where the motor was sticking because that's what electric motors do over time. Um, and Toyotas are notorious for that. Like oh, the totally. starters are at least on 22 REs. Mm-hmm. They are always had, they always die. The motor always fails on them. Yeah, like it's a, always it's a well-known yeah. problem. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you had that issue going on and then you also drained your battery down so that once you hooked up the new starter, you didn't have quite enough cranking amp juice out of the battery to turn the starter. Correct. So um, yeah, I, I think drive around a little bit more before you change your battery. Um, do you yeah. know what year, what the date code is on your battery? No, but I don't, it's not newish. Okay. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> around the time to, that the battery would be fatiguing. It, se- it seems like Optima's yellow, red, blue tops, whatever it is, they seem to go four and a half, five years. And as soon as they hit that mark, they're done. Like mm-hmm. they just immediately drastically drop off the edge and go commit suicide. So um, if you're that's every single Optima battery I've had, um, it seems like right at the round of that four and a half to five year from the date code, they all of a sudden just, they're done. Yeah. This so. one's probably in that ballpark. Yeah. I don't, I don't even remember when I bought that yellow. Yeah. Top, so <laughs> yeah, it could be, I don't know. Drive it around a little bit more. If that keeps happening, then I think it's your battery. Mm-hmm. So I'll just throw a jump. No, I'll, I'll still have the preventative <laughs> have thing. The I'll throw the jump box in, in in case <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then jump it and drive it to a, an auto parts store. Yeah. And then ch- have them change it out. Cause mm-hmm. then I don't have to. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. So that, yeah, I, I told the assistant, I was like, I'll be home in 45 minutes. And then an, an hour later I called her and I'm like, uh, I know I'm not home. Here's what <laughs> happened. I'm on my way now. Yep. And I have, um, driver's side front, um, knuckle is leaking. Yeah. So a seal went out inside yeah. and now gear oil, inner, your inner seal inner and the axle seal. Yeah. Your inner axle seal is out because gear oil is coming out, but then it seems like the gear oil is coming out, um, between the knuckle and the spindle, that flange surface right there. So, yeah. Oh. So, uh, time I know the seals yep, and gaskets time to, <laughs> and it's a good time. I don't think I'm, I don't know when the next time I really have a, uh, I don't have a trip planned anytime soon. We snow. Like snow season's coming up, yes. but it's, it's a month or so away mm-hmm. before we can actually hit the snow season. So I've got a l- some downtime that I can, fix that. And yeah. I might just redo the whole front axle Yeah, because it's been a few seasons since I've done the other side as well. If, so if Barrett stays open after this weekend, we should go do a midweek Barrett run just to help just to close the season. Uh, and mainly because I'm be open for that. And mainly because I'm upset that they're going on Thursday and we don't get to go. <laughs> yeah. We'll do a, a Wednesday next week. Yeah. Actually, I think uh, Dave's trying to do a four oh, dice trip right. next week too. Maybe I can convince. Oh, but he wants to do day trip. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could do a Barrett day trip. Yeah, I think with us, if we did day. us three, um, we can get in there. I mean, yeah, it'll be longish day. We'll be getting out at nighttime, but I think it'd be a fun trip. Yeah. We'll, Anyways, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but I do want to. I do want to fix the. Oh, another thing. One more little thing is, I really had no vibrations driving to Skills Day. Yeah, I mean. Were you driving at 50 miles an hour or more? Yeah. I was going yeah. freeway speeds for a little bit there on, on service streets. On service but, streets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that whatever white rock it, uh, it I mean, that's a, that's a fast road. It's anyway. pretty much a freeway. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, because when we left the Rubicon for the glue tread trip, mm-hmm. I went around the rig and I tightened everything. I tightened every piece all, of hardware. Every, well, I checked Except for one one piece of hardware because didn't you didn't you didn't we stop like on the freeway somewhere and you were like hey i have a weird idea it was in south lake tahoe i think when we were having lunch you said i have a really weird idea i'm just going to go out and tighten tighten these two things yeah so i tightened yeah when we got to the spill or the uh the staging area in tahoma Mm -hmm. i tightened all of my bushings in my suspension yeah and i checked uh you know a whole bunch of other things uh, but I've been leaving my cross member loose uh, from Jason Hussman's suggestion because of the I've, the low range. I forgot what kind of cross member that is. It's the kind that mounts the the flange. The, it's on low range off road. Low range yeah. off road that mounts the the output flange area and then goes to your frames. And then there are some bushings there, but they technically don't give it enough wiggle room for the amount of forces that are applied. Mm -hmm. And that's why that cross member is broken in the past. Mm -hmm. So Hussman was saying, give it like a quarter or a half an inch of play. So it can actually do with the rotation and flex that it needs to do torque flex from the drivetrain. So 
when we drove from the spillway, I had tightened all this uh, suspension stuff. And when we got to the barbecue place, I tightened the cross member up. Yep, the transfer case cross member. And then I was having, everything was going pretty good, but I had a weird, uh, I, one of my internal airlocks isn't working. So yeah. I think that that was off. And so I was getting some like wheel hop that I could uh, feel that, yeah. you know, that motion. And so driving to skills day though, everything was, I was cruising at a decent clip, like 65 mm-hmm. miles an hour. And I wasn't getting any residual vibrations or my wheel was felt fairly balanced. So it wasn't giving me yeah. any problems. Nice. Yeah. So, so you I, think that the, the weird vibration was caused from your transfer case mount being a little loose on purpose. I think the weird vibration it came is a bunch of things. Okay. But mainly I think it's bushings. Okay. I think because I cranked down the bushings to drive because I was like, normally I don't drive it on the street, Mm -hmm. right? Normally I drive it, go get it, put it on the trailer and take it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I haven't concerned myself with really making sure that my bushings are going to hold for the street. Mm -hmm. But when we, but I knew when I came out the North side that I had to drive all the way around to back to the, loon lake spillway to load up on the trailer i was like i've got a decent i've got an hour plus of driving on the road Uh let me make sure i can drive this on the road yeah (laughs) so i think that's i think it was that primarily it's a bushing issue and that maybe the t case had something to do with it Mm -hmm. um i the net i want to solve the front passenger wheel issue with the inner beadlock drive it around and see if I can get up to like 75 miles an hour and see if there's a vibration at all happening. Yeah. And then if not, then I'll loosen the T case a little bit so I can check that out, check that out and make sure that I'm not going to break the T cases. Mm-hmm. And then if that there still isn't a vibration, then I'm just, I need to replace the bushings for the show. Yeah. I regardless, I think I need <laughs> to replace the bushings. Yeah. But, bushings are for rock crawlers, uh, leaf sprung rock crawlers, bushings. If you want to drive it on the street as well, Bushings are super, super important. They just get torn up. Absolutely. Very quickly Mm -hmm. rock crawling with my spring. So, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to drive your rock crawler, leaf sprung vehicle on the street, then you're looking at replacing bushings twice a year. (laughs) Like if you really want to make sure things are solid at best once a year, like uh, you should be doing once a year. And I don't, I don't do once a year. I do once every maybe two years. Right. On mine. Yeah. Well, I did add, I've already added the new bushings in the, 63s in the rear. That's right. Yep. So I just need to do the fronts and mm-hmm. probably the frame mount frame shackles. Yeah. So maybe I even did that in the rear already. I'm not sure. Yeah. I just did those not too long ago because I went down the hunt with uh white line racing products. Right. So um yeah, I just did those, but I can already tell that they're loosening up. Oh wow. <laughs> the suspension's getting loose already. So and that was May. May or June, I think. No, right before Moab, I think, when I did it. Right. Yeah. Because I, I built well, the rebuilt the T case at the same time. Yeah. So. We did a lot of wheeling since then. <laughs> so it's true. We have. <laughs> oh, man. So, more, anyways, more than some and less than you. Sure. Does that make sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, buddy. <laughs> So, um, cool. I think that about does it. That recaps the weekend pretty well. The only other thing I did was I finished the bar. Oh kind yeah, of. it looks good. I saw a photo. It came out really, really well. So I'm really happy with how it came out. The only thing we need to do is add underglow lighting to it mm-hmm. um, and set up the freezer and the kegerator. Nice. Okay. So, yep. Well, let me know when. Well, you got to get that done before episode 350. That's right. We need that. So it doesn't give us a lot of days. Four or five weeks. That's not too bad. I can less get it than that. Now. You have three to four weeks because yeah. we got to record before the episode airs. Yeah. So that said, there is a link, a Google form link down in the description of the podcast where on episode 350, we're having the assistant and the secretary on and we're going to answer listener questions. So please go down there and fill that out. Yep. If you have any other questions for us, please contact us via email, Mm -hmm. Jimmy or Tyler at snailtrail4x4.com. You can also find us on Instagram. I'm over at snailtrail4x4. Tyler's over at 4x4 Toyota Tyler. Mm -hmm. Or you can always call in And leave us a voice message and we'll play it on the podcast and answer it right there. Mm -hmm. That phone number is area code 916-345-4744. Yep. Which is Tyler's birthday. Yeah. (laughs) And so uh, 
the yeah, good stuff. If you guys want to reach out and contact us, please, please do. Um, I did have a few questions about high water brewing when I talked about going to the high water brewing uh, or that they were opening up a uh, place yeah. down okay. in Sacramento. Um, I went over for their grand opening or the soft opening. I should say soft opening uh, soft th- opening that evening of the woodland event. Yes. Okay. After the woodland event, I went down there and um, they are in the spot of tower brewing. Oh, and tower brewing. Their most famous beer is monkey knife fight IPA. Oh, oh, that's who they, okay. That's who does monkey yeah. knife fight. I know the beer don't, drink it very often. Not an IPA fan. Yeah, I just don't drink IPAs, but um, that's if you if you are a big IPA fan, then you've probably heard of Monkey Knife Fight. Yeah, um, turns out I got to sit down and I talked with Barry for like an hour. Oh, did you really? <laughs> it was pretty cool. How's she was, doing? She's doing fantastic. Good. Um, they so turns out their Lodi location is a kitchen, right? So it has the kitchen where they can make food. They have a permit for food serving there, um, but they that does that location does not have a way to brew anything at that location. Oh, so they've been doing contract brewing for all their beers. And so they, they send out the contract and the formula and an NDA to these brewers and they brew the beer and then can it and send it all back to high water brewing and Lodi. And then they ship it out to retailers and whatnot from there. Got it. So uh, now that they are taking over Tower Brewing, and turns out Tower Brewing, um, they are selling. The owners are getting older. They're having a lot of health issues. Some emergency surgeries are coming up. Oh no! And so they're just like they have. They're being kind of forced to sell the business, retire, uh, and retire. And so uh, High Water Brewing is buying it and buying all their formulas uh, for all their beers, and they're going to continue some of the beers. Oh, cool. So Mon- monkey knife fight is going to get continued. Uh, okay. High water brewing is going to take it over and put it under their brand. Um, and uh, the really cool thing about this whole thing is that they're going to keep both locations. Nice. So Lodi is going to be kind of come in, hang out their event venue. They had, they ended up clearing out the whole back area where we had our meetup at and there's a big stage back there now. Oh, cool. And they're doing like music events there. Wow. And having people come in and, and use the stage as a music venue. So they're doing food and uh, tasting there. So it's a food and tap room, kitchen tap room there with an event uh, venue. The place in Sacramento is going to be a just a tap room. They don't have permit for foods, but Sacramento has a ton of food trucks yeah, around the area. Yep. So their goal is to always have a food truck there whenever the brewery is open. Nice. So it'll be a tap room. But the really cool part is they have the ability to brew beer there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now they don't have to do, they'll probably do some contract brewing to fulfill all their retail orders, but they're going to do a lot of the beers there in house now brewing themselves. So they're going to be fully in control of the brew process. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause I thought when, what I remember talking from talking to Barry is that they owned all the doers and all the equipment. Mm-hmm. It was just out at different locations yeah. so that those people can use it, but they had to fulfill the contract of brewing the contract orders, first, yeah, the contract yeah. orders for high water brewing first. Yep. So now it sounds like they're going to bring all that stuff in uh, some of it. Yeah. Whatever they can fit in the brewing area at the tower brewing. Yeah. yeah. But it, they're probably also getting all the stuff from tower brewing. Mm-hmm. That's still going to be there. That's yep. awesome. Good. Congratulations to them. That's yeah. That's, That's a rad. cool move. So I thought you were going to say the really cool thing is they're like 10 minutes from my house. Well, that too. So <laughs> I'm going to be in there all the time with building the bar. I'm going to have two kegs on tap all the time. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about, I was like, what two beers would I have? Cause like, I can't be selfish here. I've got to have some for the secretary as well. So I'm obviously going to put campfire stout on tap and she's probably going to pick a sour or a double high IPA. Cause she loves the IPAs but she's probably going to go with a sour goes there IPA. And I'm like, I want a few more options in that. Like, what if I want to put in, um, belching beaver, their stout, or what if I want to do a really good lager, a golden ale for summertime or something like that. So now I'm looking at, I'm like, I could probably put the freezer out in the garage and put the second kegerator in there and have four taps. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and so I told Barry that uh, we're getting the bar set up to have a kegs inside. And she goes, yeah, come on by anytime. We'll get you set up with kegs. I was like, perfect. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So anyways, um, party at Tyler's house soon. Sounds good. Yeah. 
Yeah. For episode 350. For 350. Yeah. I got to get all that set up. So anyways, um, that's it. That's all we got. It's all she wrote. Do you have any final words for everybody? Speaking of campfire stouts, mm-hmm. you want to have a beer? I do. I'm going to have one with lunch here. Awesome. Cool. And with that, my friends, keep crawling. I got one for you. Ready. What is it like to be kissed by a vampire? Ooh, a little tonguey. It's a pain in the neck. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense.